righty, and here is the video review for the San Diego Comic-Con version of Fall of Cybertron Bruticus, the Combaticons. I mean, we've got Vortex, Blast Off, Onslaught, Brawl, and Swindle. Now, Swindle, as you can kind of see it, it, uh, from the front, is the bulkiest of the lot. He's almost even bigger than Onslaught, which is a little weird. Um, but all in all, they're, they're nicely proportioned, uh, decent-sized figures. A lot of them are hollow. I mean, you can see like, he's got the hollow legs. Um... You know, there's, there's a bunch of empty space, especially Swindle. Again, he looks big, but if you turn him from the side, he's very flat um, and very empty in the back, um, which is okay. It, it, it works. It helps lighten the weight of the figure so they can form a more stable combiner. They don't fall and sag, um, and so that's nice. Um, and you get some decent-looking robot modes. You get some okay vehicle modes, um, but I think they look good. They look better than I expected in hand, and, and they're fun. Um, they're definitely indicative of the current Hasbro trend, especially with the fall of Cybertron, to make things smaller and, like I said, less plastic. Um, but there's some neat engineering going on in them, and then that's just a general overview. Uh, Size-wise, uh, there they are with Shockwave. Swindle should not be bigger than Shockwave. Onslaught, I can see uh, being a little bigger than Shockwave, um, and that's okay. Um, I think that Swindle being so much larger than Shockwave is a little weird. Although, again, he seems to fit in, eh, I guess, maybe bigger than Blast Off. Okay, next to Vortex. Okay, next to Brawl. Um, just to give you a size. Now, compared to the Autobots, uh, there's Prime. And, again, we know that this version of Prime is tiny, but he's smaller than all the Combaticons. So, not really in a decent scale with the, the main retail release deluxes. Um, at least in the first wave of retail deluxes, since these guys are coming out later. But, uh, but you know, it's Transformers and expecting scale and transformers these days sometimes they get it close um but it's really never been a consistent thing for them throughout the the history of transformers so let's let's start off with the guys let's start off with blast off here he's got his jets on the shoulder um he's got some ball jointed elbows some decent posability these shoulders hinges are on little ball joints up here um but he's he's kind of a goldish beige and purple with some black details now, one of the things that, that I, uh, the biggest complaints I have about the set is you'll see there's a lot of beige. There's a, there are, it's different shades. You know, Vortex is kind of a yellow beige. He's kind of a gold beige. And Swindle's more of his, uh, I don't know, kind of a brown beige. Um, so it's three different shades of beige, but it's still a lot of beige. And especially in the, in the combined mode, can you, I like saying beige, can you tell? Uh, in the combined mode, there's a lot of it. Like, I, I would like to have seen Blastoff maybe be heavier on the purple a little bit, I think would break that up a little bit. But, uh, but that's just the, that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, here he is. Uh, he's got a posable head. It's just uh, it is on a ball joint, but it's limited in its motion uh, just by by how it's how it's on there. Um, he does have these pistols, um, thigh swivels, uh, knees. Um, he does not have a waist swivel, but because uh, the cockpit comes down and, and locks that into place. Uh, to turn him into a space shuttle, just pull these off, and then you want to come up here. These panels are actually tabbed in back right here. You want to pop those out. And that's the only thing I don't like about this is this, you really have to force a lot of the joints on these things in places that you don't feel that the plastic's really going to hold. And in some cases, already has some stress marks on a couple of them. Uh, nothing major, nothing serious, but uh, it just structurally feel they feel a little weak. Um, it's hard to convey that in hand. They're, they're, they're nice. I like, I'm, I'm much happier with them. Uh, after seeing pictures, which is why I ordered them, I hadn't intended to get him. I figured I'd just pick up the retail version. And then I saw a bunch of pictures that made him look semi-decent. And playing with him, uh, there is some neat detailing. He's like a thruster back here behind his hand, which is kind of neat. I need to fold the arms up. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with them. Uh, but but there are some issues. They're, they're not perfect. But uh, really, Transformers-wise these days, what, what is? Uh, snap those together. And then the legs come up, and there's a little hook right here that's going to tab into these little pegs right here, these little slots right here. Just want to make sure that locks into place. And then the same over here. Bring that up, lock that on, and there he is in space shuttle mode. And you can put the guns on. They peg right on here. You can do them however you want. You can peg them on like this with the fins out if you want. Uh, I like to put them on like this with the fins up. But there he is. There's blast off in shuttle mode. Set him off to the side. Vortex. Um, here he is. He's got this little kind of red skirt, and a lot. You see a lot more red here 
than you're going to see in vehicle mode. Um, a lot of the red comes out in his robot mode. Um, the fins popped out. But he's got he's got double jointed knees. Uh, if if you need those, this is really where the cockpit transforms the actual robot knees right here. But you can use that joint as well. Uh, the weird swivel here on the shoulder. Uh, he's got these blades, which you know on top of this blade. Personally, since he's got the two blades and the blades are automatically attached over here, I like to take these weapons and give him a kind of a, a blade staff like that. So it kind of balances him out with the, with the blades already on, on this arm. But uh, again, it's up to you. And his head, again, is on a ball joint, but it just due to the, the, the intakes on either side of his head, it's very limited. Uh, it does look up for transformation. Um, and again, this flap can come forward and can, can, can get out of the way if you want him to sit down. And he does have a waist swivel, thanks to his transformation. But you flip the head up. Actually, you want to flip it all the way up, like all the way up like that, and then all the way up into there. Um, and this whole piece comes around like that. The arms actually unhinge, and here's where you can see one of the stress marks right here in this little joint. Uh, there's a little red mark through there. But these come forward. The arms come up. You actually rotate the arm all the way around like this. Get this up here, and then flip it back over on itself like this. Rotate it up and it's going to lock right there into place. And again, same over here, flip this up, rotate it around at the elbow, and then flip it all the way back down like that. Bring that up. Come on. And then those two peg together just like that. And then this whole panel with the propellers on it rotates around to bring that into the center of the helicopter. The legs, like I said, you Rotate at the waist. Uh, you want to flip these fins out, and again, these feel a little tight the first couple times you do them. Uh, there's a gun right here. You want to flip this up like that. Flip this gun out. Flip this up right here. And these peg together. And then there's a couple little tabs here that goes into these little slots right here on the back of him. Get them together. And uh, like I said, he's a little messy under here from where the, the robot knees end up attaching. Uh, but that's just how it is. And then uh, the, the propellers, uh, the blades, you actually rotate them out. He's got two sets, so he's got a four set of blades, just like that. And then these blades can kind of in, in an almost arachnid type of way, although he looks better than arachnid, I think. Uh, well, actually, his helicopter mode maybe doesn't look quite as sleek, but overall he's a much better toy than arachnid. Uh, given the blades, and there's Vortex in helicopter mode. Brawl, let's take his gun here. Do, do, do. Um, and he, he's a little blocky. He's got his turret on his back. A lot of it, a lot of his vehicle mode is just kind of there on his back. Um, but he's got some, some decently positionable shoulders, uh, ball joint elbows. Uh, you can swivel him up out here. His fists are just on hinges. His feet are just on hinges. Uh, he's got ball jointed thighs. He does have a thigh swivel and a knee joint. Um, his head's on, again, like all the others, his head's on a ball joint, but limited by what's around there. I'm going to transform him. You just want to push his head down. And then you bring the arms actually come up and around like this. You can see there's a little peg here, peg on here. It's tabs into there. Flip the hand in. Again, you flip the hand up before you go up, but you just lift it up like this. And again, attach it like that. And then that tab pat is going to tab right in here into the backpack. There's a little slot right here on the front of the backpack that this tabs into. And then the legs come up, fold up around the body, fold up the foot, and they peg in. All together just like this. Come on, why are we not doing this? Oh, do they come up like this? Nope, okay, that's right. They're supposed to hook together here with these. There we go. There we go. There's a little tab up actually in there, underneath there, that taps everything together. Come on, why are you, why are you being... There we go. Just like that. You can see how he's pegging like this. There you go. And no, you come back together and peg together. There we go. Just like that. This piece, uh, the jet engine piece, uh, folds down. The, the turret, the connector actually folds down under like that. So he's got his little thrusters here on the back. And then the turret can rotate. And the little thing in the gun actually pegs 
right in here in between the turret. You don't want to push it all the way in because it is kind of hard to get out. So if you have any interest in popping it back out later, uh, don't push it in all the way. But there he is. Hover tank, brawl. And he's kind of a neat little tank, tank design, I think. Swindle. Let's go ahead and pop his gun off. Um, the shoulders come up like on this thing right here. You want to make sure they lift up. They, they slide. Uh, well, I'll show you that during the transformation. But they slide on a, on a bar back and forth. And if you have to slide them all the way forward to get them to come up to the proper position. Uh, he also has his waist swivel, uh, his head. His head actually does not seem to be on a ball joint. It looks like it's on just a straight swivel. But again, it would be limited by the stuff around it, like all the others. Uh, but, you know, hinged knees, thigh swivel, ball joint hips. Uh, his feet are on hinges, but you're not really going to get a whole lot of useful movement out of them. Uh, ball joint shoulders, ball joint elbows. Uh, these little panels can slide around on the wheel, so you, can, you don't have to have them down like this. If you want to have them more up on the shoulder, you can do that. Uh, transform, you want to snap his legs together here just like that. Flip the feet down. Like this, rotate the whole waist assembly around. Unpeg these little claws from the peg in right here. And here's what I was talking about with the arms. You can see there, hopefully you can see there, they're sitting there on, on like a, a sliding, you can see the pin right there? As you bring them down, they actually slide down on the pin. Oh, this way. Yeah, so you can see that that piece slides down the pin as it transforms. But you bring them in, uh, bring this piece up. This, these you want to fold up kind of around behind the shoulder. Um, the legs, bend them up at the waist like that. Uh, and then there's a couple little slots here right at the hip. I don't know if you can see those. But uh, the, there's a peg here on the arm that pegs in, pegs the arm in at the proper angle into the side of the hip. Um, but yeah, you bring, bring this down as far as you need to. And peg it in so that that'll hold the hand there with the exhaust pipes coming up that in a way that doesn't block the wheel if you do it wrong the, the hands will end up sticking the wheel so I just make sure you're at the right angle there this one doesn't like to line up properly until you get it pegged in but there you go peg those in and then for this like I said bring these in as far as you can and position these so they kind of rest right against the hip piece the tip of them and then this comes up and around you want to flip his head down and there's some tabs right in here, and they're going to tab into the top sets of slots. You can see there's two sets of slots right here. You want to peg it into the top one. Just snap it, just snap it right into place. And there he is in vehicle mode. And he's a neat little Cybertronian vehicle, uh, Jeep type thing, and his gun just pegs in right there. And there's Swindle. Now on to Onslaught. Pop out his gun. And you want to take him, and he's a little tricky because he, he doesn't really fold up in anything real interesting. Uh, he, he kind of vaguely evokes his car mode from the game, but uh, not all that well. But you pull the, this, this waste piece for, back from here. You want to flip this up so uh, his Bruticus head is visible. Turn the Bruticus head backwards. Uh, now these panels come up like this, so these bumpers are facing front. And then the arms come up. And you can see, and I'll just go see, he's got ball jointed elbows, hinge arms. Uh, his head also on a ball joint, but again, limited by the stuff around it. Um, and all in all, he, he's t the tallest of the group, but like I said, Swindle looks the, mo the broadest and the most massive. Um, he does have a waist swivel, which ends up being Bruticus's waist swivel, which is nice. Uh, but anyway, you bring these up, flip the head up, get back to transformation. I kind of jumped right into that. Uh, the ball joints here, especially, the the, the like to pop out because they're these tiny little balls and uh, ow there we go and the and these hinges are very stiff but you bring these hinges up get that lined up those lined up properly and then the arms come back down like this and fold up and cover kind of cover his face here actually you want to bring him down a little bit bring him in like that because they actually should peg together I thought Oh, here we go. There we go. Ah. Yeah, see, this, this joint is a pain in the butt. All right, you want to bring it so these posts are up on top. 
and then fold him in, and his arms kind of cover his head there, just like that. Like I said, it's it's kind of kind of weak sauce, but uh, if you look to the side, it kind of looks like he's covering his face or his head. But uh, that's just how it how it works. I can bring this back, fold the uh, the waist piece back, all the way back like this. Uh, the legs you want to take and split them right here, rotate them around and peg them in. That brings the wheels to the outside. Uh, this comes down and just kind of sits there. Um, there's not a whole lot really to this vehicle mode. And you bring this down like that. And that essentially is his, is his vehicle mode. It's not anything super amazing. I don't know if we can get this underneath here. No, there's no, there's no room for this to come down underneath the vehicle. It doesn't look like. No, there's there's no room for it. I thought maybe you could get that out of the way at least, but no. So there's his here's there's his clunky vehicle mode. It's very open at the back. It's very reminiscent of Cup. Um, I thought these pegged on somewhere too, but oh no, here we go. There's a couple little pegs here on the side of this that the it looks like these. Yeah, there we go. You peg. There's a peg hole right behind there and a peg on the leg that you just peg in like that. So there we go. That holds everything together. I knew something pegged it back here. And there's the vehicle mode. And then his gun, these two pegs on the back of the arm, there's a couple little peg holes up inside the gun. Uh, it just pegs on right there. And there is Onslaught as a vehicle. Not super amazing, but uh, his vehicle mode is definitely the weakest of the bunch. It's not bad. It's, it's a little armor, you know, if you need it to ram something, which I guess is really all you'd need. Uh, it'll do the job. It's got a gun, it's got wheels, and it looks heavy-duty enough to maybe plow into something. It looks like he should have a trailer, too. But again, uh, that might help help the look of it. But he's just he's just kind of hollow. And like I said, of, of the vehicles, the weakest of the bunch, I believe. At least that's my feeling on it. Anyway, here's all the uh, limbs together here. Let's see if we can't get in vehicle mode. There's everybody. Vortex, Brawl. Onslaught, Swindle, and Blast Off. So, now that we've got robot mode and vehicle mode, on to the giant, giant Bruticus. He's not super giant. I mean, he's not as tall as Hercules or anything, but, but he's big. Now, for uh, Blast Off to be the arm, you want to pull the guns off, and all the guns can combine to form a weapon. But you pull the guns off, um, now, they are kind of very Scramble City-esque. You can have any of them be an arm or a leg. And for Blast Off, if you want them to be a leg, you just fold these pieces in like this, uh, bring this no nozzle forward uh, just to get it out of the way of the connector, and you can plug him in as a leg just like that. That's his foot mode. It's not super sturdy, but there it is. Um, but we're going to transform him officially into an arm mode, and then I'll show you a couple of ways to make him look better. Officially, his arm mode is to unpeg these and bring extend the legs down like this. You do want to go ahead and fold these back as well. And then you bring these around and rotate them in so these fist pieces right here peg together. And uh, oh, you want to bring the there we go. I'm going to make sure that in your transformation that these hip joints there, there's the inside of the hip. You want to bring it up and rotate it down so it's solid on the outside and doesn't have the uh, the hollowness. Um, but yeah, bring them in, rotate these around so these fists come together. You can see there's a tab here that pegs these two pieces together. I don't know why you're giving me such a hard time with this. Now maybe, maybe, just maybe, I did this wrong. Well, no. Yeah, that's, that was right. I don't know why they're not cooperating here. But anyway, you want to, you want to get these hands connected because it's the front and back half of the hand. And then... Um, oh, there we go. Nur, 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 nur. There we go. Peg them together like this. 
So you don't want to fold them all the way back. You want to fold them halfway back, these, these pieces with the hand in it. And then the hand can flip out once it's pegged together. You can, it probably actually helps to flip them out beforehand. Uh, and then whichever side you decide, uh, you can see there's a, there's a thumb piece that comes out to form the fist. So on the front, the piece that's going to be his front, you want to leave the, uh, you want to go ahead and flip that thumb out. On the back one, we're going to go ahead and push that up. So it's just the back of the fist. And then if you were going to switch them over to this arm again, you just flip out this thumb and leave this one up. But you peg it together. And now he's got his fist there with the thumb. Which is actually kind of a neat way of doing it. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and flip the connector out. This is going to give him a very long gorilla arm. There are ways to make it look a little better, and we'll show those off in a little bit. Put the guns off to the side. Swindle into a leg. You want to pop his gun off again. And, uh, and he's actually pretty simple. You want to flip out his robot mode feet, and they kind of combine the, combine the foot. Uh, now, to be an arm, again, it, it, it's going to be very similar to the leg, except you'll have this disconnected. And uh, he's got, again, there's his right hand. Or, yeah, his right arm, if he's a right arm. He's actually got two full fists in here. If you turn him around to this arm, he's got a fist under there. Other than that, he's going to be essentially the leg transformation again. But, yeah, flip up the feet. Uh, and then you want to unsnap this this front piece that we snapped into the top row of slots the first time. And you lift it up, and then you want to push, pull, lift up here, and grab it here and pull it back so it's, uh, it's connected to this uh, connector. Flip it so that comes up. And because it's connected, that pushes this piece out a lot further. And so you angle that in, and this time we're going to peg these tabs into the bottom slots. It kind of angles his, his, his hood out. You can see now he's more of an angle that way, but that's what gives him his foot mode. And you can leave these up if you want. You can fold them down however you stylistically choose to want to do it when he's in robot mode. Um, when he's in Bruticus mode, I guess. And again, like I said, for the arm, it's the same thing. You just bring the uh, the connector down like that, and you can disconnect the legs to extend his arm, uh, give him some elbow articulation, leave these in here. And again, you can just plug him into as an arm like that, flip out the fist, flip down the feet, and, and there he is in arm mode. We're going to go with the standard configuration, though, for this, so we're going to put him back into foot mode. And again, just this just involves reattaching this piece to this piece via those bottom pegs. And there he is. And again, you can, you can fiddle with it, and you know if you want to have smokestacks out, you've got some aesthetic choices you can make. I prefer to just, yes, you do have to have the arms unpegged, I think. Yeah, the arms don't peg in like that, but just, just like that, standard foot. I'll put him off to the side. Brawl, again, same thing as the others. Uh, here's his connector. Uh, you can have him become an arm with, like, bring this out and his legs come down. Oh, whoops. <laughs> his hands are, are in the upper the legs here. And again, you flip out whichever side you're using. You flip this out as his hand. And then, uh, then you use his foot as his thumb. So he kind of ends up getting, like, a little claw hand. But, uh, and you can give him, uh, actually, I think you can attach these together. Yes, you can. Da -da -da -da. These snap together like this, and you can, you can have him, you can give him a full hand here. Big open palm, like that, with, and then again, depending on which arm you attach him to, the foot serves as the thumb. So that's kind of cool. But we're, again, we're going to take him into a leg, so that just leaves, just means flipping these back up. like this. Pull this whole thing out and down. There's a little clip here that's going to clip right over the, the back shell of the tank. Uh, rotate this up like that. It kind of sticks out a bit like that. And then bring the foot down like this to form a foot. You can leave his gun attached. Just pop it out. It's going to become part of the weapon. Put it there. And then again, we'll flip his legs back into vehicle mode configuration here. And again, how you do it, you, the engines can flip forward. Uh, depending on how you want to do it, back to that whole, you've got a little bit of choice here. You can leave him in just pretty much tank mode here. 
uh, as a foot. That kind of widens him up as a foot, makes him a little bit more sturdy. Uh, officially, the transformation has these pieces come back to give him a little bit more of a heel and thin that leg. But it's up to you. You can have him as, as a skinny leg. If you prefer, you can you can fold these pieces up into their tank mode configuration and uh, have him have a broader foot. I'm just going to go ahead and leave him in tank mode configuration just to... It's going to help facilitate some things later on in the, in the video. But yeah, there he is. And then again, the connector just, just flips up here out of the back. Vortex. Again, weapons off first. Uh, the helicopter blades all depends on how you want them. You can leave them open like this. You can close them up like that. Really just personal preference on how you want to do it. And he's not all that hard. You just want to flip the connector down. Um, again, for leg, you just you, you leave the connector up, flip this forward a little bit just to get it out of the way of the range of motion, and then you pull, you disconnect the, uh, this right here, and then just kind of bring this whole thing down like that and flip him up like that. And uh, there he is as a foot. And you can flip this gun in as well if you choose. Uh, that's his foot mode. Uh, but to make him into an arm, you open this up, you open this up, you flip the gun in, and you flip out the hand. And again, just like the others, the hand, here he is as a left hand. Um, and then the thumb can actually flip all the way over to make him a, a right hand, depending on which arm you want to stick it on. Just rotates right around like that. But you just pop the hand out, stick these back together. You rotate it like this so the hand faces forward. And, uh, and that's pretty much it for his, for his arm mode. You can, if you want, again, collapse this up into the body a little bit more, make him not quite as gorilla-ish of, of an arm. I tend to do that, but, uh, but officially the arm is like this. Onslaught, you pretty much just turn back to robot mode. You want to bring, unpeg this, bring this all the way down and around. You want to rotate his, him at the waist all the way around. Uh, there's a p tab right here that's going to peg in right here onto his waist, just like that. Uh, the legs come down like this. Uh, the arms actually rotate down and around, and then the hands grab these, tw you twist the hands around and have them grab this peg here on the, uh, on the body there, just like that. And again, up here, bring this around, and then have fold the arm up so it ends up grabbing that peg. You want, to bring this, you want to bring this all the way up and around like that. These hinges should be all the way up like that. Of course. There we go. And then you flip the Bruticus head up, turn it around, and you can flip these up. Again, you can leave them down if you don't like them, but you flip those up. And that's pretty much torso mode right there. Um, his gun can, again, there's a couple wider pegs, can peg right on the back of his head. You can also use this gun as part of the giant combined gun. I like to have it up behind his head. It comes in the package sitting there behind his head. And then you just combine them. Uh, you just take these. These connectors, uh, they do swivel here. And you want to make sure that if you're ever twisting them connected, you make sure they swivel at their swivel point. You cannot twist these connectors around these posts because they will have a tendency to snap. Like, I don't know who made these connectors. They're sturdier than Energon connectors or the, uh, the power core combiner connectors but they are very, they feel like they could snap at any time because they really just, they're just, they just spread out to attach. You have to pull them straight off and snap them straight on. You don't want to wiggle them too much or that you could just snap it right off. But anyway, you just click everything together, just push it, uses a little bit of force. Uh, same with Brawl over here. There. Like I said, you, his, his this little connector is a little loose. And there we go, you just got to really push those down. You can fold these up around the connector. I like to leave them up just to kind of bulk up that, that joint. Um, and there are the legs. And then you just come up here and do the same thing up here on the arms. Snap blast off on. Snap vortex on. And then the gun, you take Swindle's gun, you attach uh, blast off's gun to either side of it, take Brawl's gun, plug it right into the end, and then you just plug the blades in, and that's the gun I prefer to use. He can hold it in his hand. Again, that makes that arm freakishly long. 
So there's that. Um, you can you can plug it into any of the peg holes if you want to have him carry it up here, make his arm look a little less long. That works. You can break it up into all the smaller weapons and just kind of store them on his body. They can all peg into the gun on his back. Um, it's up to you. Now, like I said, some some ways to make things look a little better. You can uh, you can collapse this up a little bit so this arm isn't quite as long, um, like that. Which looks a little silly now, but when you get all this done, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, this arm, you can unpeg this. And you can flip these up and kind of rotate them out and around. Uh, flip it like this. Again, just, just, flip, just kind of flip them up and around so they store in. And then right here, you can use his swivel to kind of... It gives him a bulkier forearm, but it gives him a little bit more proportioned hand there. It's a little silly, but, uh, you know, it, it's not perfect. But it, it gives his arm a little bit better proportion than that long grill arm. You can also, Swindle actually makes a really good arm and he makes a decent leg. You could swap them as well. One of the things that I like is that you don't have to keep these thighs as thin, like the legs look a little skinny on him. If you give him a little bit of a G1 twist, G1 transformation, uh, it helps with that. It gives him a little bit more thunder thighs, but, uh, but you can give him, uh, you can give him like stolider thighs. And basically you do that by doing the, the G1 squat, as I like to call it. You bring it up like this, Rotate it so that wheel faces forward, and then bend it uh, the same way that, uh, and then rotate this on the connector. Uh, you know, in much the same way that uh, G1 combiner torsos, you know, used to do that kind of squat to transform, and that brings the wheels around to the front to fill in the thighs a little bit more, and gives him an overall like squatter, bulkier appearance, like he has in a lot of the concept art. Um, Again, totally up to you. You don't have to do it. Uh, just something I found that helps with that a little bit. It looks a little hollow here. It doesn't look quite as, because you can kind of see through it. But it doesn't look as bad in person. Just an option. Uh, and again, here's his, you can hold his weapon here. Um, size comparison, here he is combined with Shockwave um, and the Autobots. Um, Optimus and Jazz from the Wave 1. But yeah, all in all, I'm, I'm pretty happy with him. I think he's really cool. Um, I'm looking forward. I'll probably get a couple of the retail versions and the, maybe even the G2 one to swap out some limbs just to maybe make it look a little better um, or, or fit him. Like, I would like to have the retail version of Blast Off because he's more purple just to kind of break up. You can see, like I was talking about, there's a lot of beige on him. And even though it's different shades of beige, there's really no way to get it away from each other. Like, you can't. No matter which limb you swap, there's always going to be two beige limbs on one side of his body, and that's a little bit of a pain. But there he is, uh, Fall of Cybertron Generations Bruticus from San Diego Comic-Con.